one aspect that I found when I was in your position many years ago was the fact that uh, Americans just don't seem to understand Asian culture. Well, uh, again, you have to understand that the, the predominant society is basically Eurocentric. I get into bigger arguments with some of the, my colleagues on the, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I ask the question, why is it that a lot of these Asian leaders ended up being socialist Marxists? You know why? Because the worst example of democracy and, and freedom and, and all these uh, talks uh, are the European countries that came and colonized these Asian countries. The British in Burma and China, uh, the Dutch in Indonesia, the French in Vietnam and Laos in Cambodia. For 100 years, Vietnam was a colony of the French. And I would bet to say that probably 90% of the American people never knew that before we got involved in mm -hmm. Vietnam. And uh, to say that we've demonized this peasant by the name of Ho Chi Minh, that he was evil and he was a communist, all he was trying to do was to get rid of French colonialism. Uh, and they did so successfully in 1954 when the ragtag army managed to, to, to defeat one of the most powerful nations in the world. France, yeah. Uh, and that's what said, I, I, I think, the tone where, where we kind of just followed along because we're part of that mentality, if you will. So I, I always say to my colleagues, if you want to talk about democracy, if you want to talk about freedom, and the fact that China, when it became an independent nation in 1949, there were 400 million Chinese living in China at the time. And so I, I think we have to be circumspective about the fact that some of these countries have only existed as, as democracies, if you will, less than, 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 than even less than 50 years. Classic example is Kazakhstan. I have the Central Asian countries under the jurisdiction of my subcommittee. 17 years, Kazakhstan. And I don't know if many people know that some 500 nuclear explosions. This is where the Soviet Union conducted its nuclear testing. And some 1.5 million Kazakhs were exposed to nuclear radiation as, on account of the Soviet Union's nuclear testing program. Mm. And, so, and, and here again, President of Kazakhstan, one of the first things he did was to, to, to ask the U.S. to get rid of it. He, he had the fourth largest number of nuclear weapons, believe it or not in the world. If he wanted to, he could have traded off with the terrorists. He could have exported it. He could have been a nuclear power overnight if he wanted to. But no, he thought that there's going to be a lot better way to, to help his people. And uh, this is part of the world about, we're talking seriously now about uh, uh, the non-proliferation issues. How many more nuclear bombs do we need to produce to vaporize each other? It's not killing, it's vaporizing other human beings. I mean, this madness, uh, Congressman, to me is, is, is... Do you think, really, that we can trust those other nations? I know that we can uh, take our stockpile and do away with them, but what about the other nations? It isn't just with other nations, Congressman. We're just as much distrustful of others as well. I mean, that's part of human nature. I understand that. I understand that. I, I know I'm skipping all over it, but you've got a wide jurisdiction. I've, I've come to Burma for a moment. Myanmar, you mean? So yes, Myanmar. Bur Burma is a colonial uh, right. uh, usage by the British. Right. <laughs> uh, and with Osong Suu Kyi. Yes. Uh, she's recently been arrested once again. Uh, what do you think of the regime there and what can be done? What can America do? Well, Congressman, Myanmar is a closed society. Myanmar also to many in the minds of many of our people in America and throughout the world, we don't know the history of this country. I remember as a high school student, the only name that I always never forgot that came out of, of Myanmar or Burma at the time was Uthant. Mm -hmm. Uthant was the Secretary General of the United Nations and he did such a, a fantastic job, very respected leader throughout the world. And then all these things happened in Myanmar. Uh, how many Americans know that there are about seven or eight sub-districts within Myanmar that are constantly fighting among themselves. So they continue to and fight. the only organization that was able to put some sense of rule or order was the military. Now, I know the media, are, the Western media has been very heavy in attacking the, the military junta that is, has been there for all these years. But then there's more than to, to Myanmar than what I'm just saying. And the point here is that we have such limited understanding of the culture, of the nature of what has happened in Myanmar uh, for all this time. And I suppose we've used Aung San Suu Kyi as a symbol 
uh, of our sense of democracy. You know, she married a British uh, official. Yeah. And for the most part, she lived in, in Europe, in, in England, I believe. It was so. her father, really, that was the father. Right, um, right. And I think her father was, uh, was killed in the process. What, I, what I'm simply saying here is that we don't know enough about what's happening in that country. And I'm hopeful that uh, someday I might be able to go visit myself. Well, I, I, I'm, at one point, I arranged for Bill Richardson to visit with uh, uh, Osang Suu Kyi and with the first American to be able to visit with her. Uh, the, the question that you raise, uh, or the, the point that you raise, I think is a significant one, the question of soft power rather well. than and, and, uh, uh, changing our style uh, and, and, and in dealing with the Asian nations. Oh, I, I, I absolutely, yes, uh, absolute believer in that. But I think our f uh, other friends on the other side of the aisle look at soft power as a way of appeasement, uh, that we've become passive, that we've become soft, that we don't show f uh, strength uh, uh, by telling them that we can, we can kill you all if we wanted to. So what? I, I, I don't think that's the, that's the sense that... Uh, uh, the world community has had such high expectations. Why? Not because of our military capability. We found that out in Vietnam. Ten years we were there, we dropped more bombs in Vietnam than we did in the whole World War II. And where did it get us? We got kicked out of Vietnam by an army peasant, a peasant army, if you want to put it in those terms. No. Soft power, in my humble opinion, uh, is the basis that you go there knowingly you know, it's like the Chinese saying, you know, you don't have to show that the most powerful person is the most serene, <laughs> the most calm, the most collective. Uh, you don't have to, to prove yourself whether or not you've got the... Uh, that uh, that, the, that the, is the conflict between the Asian mentality. And, and, and the European and, and the right. Western. Uh, I, right. Exactly, you hit it right there. Uh, your final message, we have only a few minutes. Your final message to the people uh, of... Uh, uh, Asia, the parliamentarians of Asia? Well, I, I do want to say that to all my fellow parliamentarians that uh, uh, we certainly have not lost hope. Uh, and that with the advent of a newly elected president uh, in our country and Barack uh, Hussein Obama, uh, I, I have tremendous hope and confidence uh, that the, uh, the president of the United States and members of his cabinet through Secretary Clinton, I believe, is going to bring about an entirely new uh, sense of understanding and reaching out uh, to all countries of the world, not just to our friends, but those countries who also uh, uh, question uh, us in terms of our motives and what we want to do sincerely, to Iran uh, even, and, and even to Venezuela, to Bolivia, why not? Uh, and I think if we go down deeply to see for, for ourselves that these people want nothing more than the same things that the American people and the average American family wants out there. Security, food, shelter, education. I think all the peoples of the world in my travels, in all the countries that I visited, Congressman, I think this is what, this is what uh, any human being or family would want. And I think that's what we're trying to establish here. Well, uh, we can help you in your effort uh, by providing you the services of Congress <laughs> Web TV uh, to get your message across uh, to the parliamentarians about the world on a parliament-to-parliament -parliament basis. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. We hope that uh, we can have you back again in the near future so that we can have kind of a regular report to Asia Let's from do the it. chairman. i would be more than happy to help you in that. Regard. Great. And now until next week at the same time, this is Lester Wolf saying so long from Washington, and thank you very much, Chairman Palaimovanga. Thank you.